So the first thing that you have to do before you play the trumpet is you have to make six different assessments before you actually start playing. The first you have to do is assess the case. Um, the first rule with the case is you never ever ever open it on anything but the ground, especially for beginning students. Um, always on the floor and you have to make sure the case is um, working, you have to make sure all the little latches fit, um, make sure the handle isn't going to fall off, make sure there's no dents, make sure there's no um, holes in the case, it's a pretty sturdy case. Um, second, you have to assess the mouthpiece. When you're looking at the mouthpiece, you have to make sure that there's no cuts, that there's no dents, that this is fully straight. Um, have to make sure because if there's cuts or if there's dents or anything right on the mouthpiece and that could cut your lip, not a good thing. Um, so you just have to make sure that this is in full working order. Third, you have to make sure that all of the slides and all of the valves are moving correctly. So these valves are in pretty good working order. Um, my slides, because it is a pretty um, used trumpet by various different people, um, only this slide really works. Right here, this tuning slide, this one can come out as well, but not very easily. Um, and this slide doesn't move, um, and neither does this slide. And um, they're just tuning slides, so I'll just be really out of tune since they won't move. Um, you can get um, uh, slide oil or slide grease, but um, I didn't. <laughs> and um, this is valve oil to help with, to make sure that these aren't sticking. Fifth, you have to make sure that um, there's no dents or scrapes on this trumpet. Um, if there are, it can affect the quality of the sound. This trumpet's in pretty good working order. There's a few scrapes, no major dents, but it is a trumpet that's been used by various amounts of people, so it can be in 100% working order. Um, Sixth, if you have water keys, you have to make sure that they work and that they're working properly. Um, I don't have water keys on this trumpet, so that's not an issue that I need to assess. Next, we have instrument assembly. So when you assemble your trumpet, it's pretty easy to assemble. Um, make sure you always get the trumpet out first from off the ground from the case. Then you're going to take your mouthpiece out. It's pretty easy to assemble. Just kind of stick it in, but make sure to always give it a slight turn to the right to make sure that um, it stays put. And when you're playing the trumpet, the correct posture, obviously sitting up straight so that you can have very big breaths. Um, never, you never want to play the trumpet just straight on, and you never want to play it down here. You always want to make sure it's at a slight angle down so that you can see your music as well as the conductor in front of you. The next thing that I'm going to talk about is there are two um, different ways to help with your embouchure. Um, when you have, when you're playing the trumpet, you need to make sure that your embouchure is tight here, and that you're not doing this into it, and that you're not like going over it or anything. You need to make sure that it is very tight, and then you need to make sure that it's firm, and that your lips <coughs> are curled in. So one of the methods we can use to make sure you have the correct embouchure is the straw method. You're gonna bite down on the straw. You're going to curl your lips in, and you're going to say the word M. And that's the correct embouchure when using the straw method. Um, stopped buzzing is also another helpful thing that you can use to make sure that you have the correct embouchure. Um, when you're doing stop buzzing, um, it's going to look like this. Another good warm-up thing to have playing the instrument is buzzing. Um, very hard you want to make sure to that there's that back you're not pressure. a consistent brass player. Um, me. Well, after um, you put your finger on the hole. Uh, basically, to, you want to uh, have the sure embouchure that, that you would have while playing the trumpet, playing the trumpet and buzz the note with your lips because we want to make sure that the noise from the instrument is coming from you. It's coming from right here. Not it's not the instrument itself making the noise. Obviously. Um, so free buzz. We're gonna start at a concert B flat. Let me get my measurement. We're going to put the metronome at 72, roughly, I think. For the concert. 
or B flat? It goes like this. exercise that we're going to do is mouthpiece buzzing. Mouth playing with your mouthpiece is much harder than actual playing playing when it's actually connected to the trumpet. Um, just because, I don't know, there's more space for it to go. Um, so we're going to start at a concert F um, with your mouthpiece. When you play with your mouthpiece, you want to make sure you're holding it with your thumb and any of these other fingers. Most people just use their pointer finger. Um, and then we're just going to go down a little bit. 72 again. So we're going to start on a concert B-flat, which is C for B-flat trumpet, so. Thank <laughs> you. 
Next thing we're going to be doing is Brack-Tech articulation number one. Um, basically, we're just going up from C to G, or concert B flat to F, um, and back down to C or B, concert B flat, um, just tonguing every single note instead of slurring every single note. So, concert B flat. <laughs> number two and um, this one's more challenging because it has different articulations that we're supposed to do um, really hard so we'll see how it goes <laughs> Concert B flat, so B C for trumpet, and here we go. Mm. <laughs> 